a test because I'm not sure if this is actually getting my good side. What's up guys? It's Kay here. I have a very special video for you today. I am going to blow your mind in five, four, three, two, one. All over the world, there is an epidemic that is affecting millions of Americans every day. Some people have become immune, but others are struggling to survive through this Black Plague look-alike. People run in terror as they scream, Oh my God, it's coming! And look out before it gets you! I'm here to give you the news flash on this epidemic. What is this epidemic? You ask, tell you. The epidemic that is circling like a cyclone across all of the world is food. Okay, that was a little dramatic. My apologies, I don't know who let her in here. Let's get serious for a second and just talk. Person to person, if you're anything like me, food is the most amazing thing in the entire existence of anything. But, just like any good thing in life, like marriage and family vacations, they come with consequences. Yep, you called it. I'm here talking about food safety. Did you know that foodborne illness affects 48 million Americas alone? Americas? 48 million Americans each year alone. That's just America. 128,000 people are hospitalized because of foodborne illness, and 3,000 of those people will die. <sighs> See what I mean by consequences? It is not a light topic, ladies and gentlemen. It is it is widely spread amongst millions, millions of people. Can you imagine the rest of the world being like that? Alone in China, there's over one billion people. It's crazy, it's crazy. What is life? Wound-borne illnesses include Salmonella, E. coli, Shigella, worms, tapeworms, Listeria, and hundreds more. The CDC has discovered over 250 different foodborne illnesses. If you've ever gotten food poisoning, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Getting food poisoning is probably the closest thing to death you will ever feel. There's so many symptoms that come with it. Diarrhea, vomiting, fever, different types of headaches, stomach cramps, you lose your appetite, feel weak. There's so many, you get the chills from the fever. There's so many different things. And to top that off, there's more deadly symptoms of like bloody urine, dehydration, and so much more. That's crazy. The people that are the most susceptible to food poisoning are young children, mostly under the age of four, old people over the age of 60, and anyone with an immune deficiency, liver disease, kidney disease, any kind of diabetes, anything like that, are extremely at a higher risk of getting foodborne illness, and they should be careful. When you get food poisoning, it's usually from cross-contamination, Things being around things that shouldn't be there, things being undercooked, things not being prepared properly, and many other things. To get a foodborne illness, there has to be some form of bacteria, virus, or parasite on the food that you're eating. The scariest thing about all of this is you can't see it. Imagine this. If you're in a grocery store and you're in the deli, and you see a pre-made sandwich and you grab it for lunch, you don't know what has been on that sandwich. Not saying that you shouldn't go and eat, but you should be cautious of what you pick up at the grocery store because you don't know if there's any bacteria on it that could cause E. coli or anything worse. If we can't have food, what do we do? You can't talk about safety for anything without talking about the hazards. You bought that sandwich and you ate it, there's no way that you could have known that you were buying 
roast beef, cheddar, bacteria, and lettuce, tomato, whatever's on the sandwich between two whole wheat buns. But hey, you shouldn't complain too much because <laughs> bacteria usually costs extra and uh, you just got a deal. It's the scary thing is you never know what you're getting. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Virus, parasite, or bacteria. Three different type. Damn. Main foodborne illnesses. These are the things that cause them. Write it down. Write it down in your notes right now. And the people that made your food could have done anything near your food. Anything. Food safety is so important. I can't, I, I can't. I can't even explain to you how important this is because what you put in your mouth could kill you. And I'm not saying that to scare you into not eating anything because food is awesome. I'm just here to tell you ways that you can prevent getting foodborne illness. And now we're gonna talk about the positives and how to avoid getting these things that are horrible. You mean there's a way to avoid it? Here's the facts. There are four different words that you need to remember so that you can make sure that you are going to be safe with food. C S C C. Clean, separate, cook, chill. When we talk about the first C, we're talking about clean. Now that means washing your hands, washing the food that you're about to cook if it's vegetables or any kind of fruit, anything like that, you should always make sure that you're cleaning it off properly. Another really important thing to remember is to clean off the surface that you're about to cook on. If you're using a cutting board that you just cut chicken on, please, please get a new cutting board or clean it off with hot water and soap. Now when we're talking about the S, we're talking about separate. Do not put chicken next to fruit at all. When you put things in the fridge, make sure that any type of meat, any beef, it doesn't even matter what it is, beef, pork, anything raw, do not put it near vegetables. Do not put it on the very top shelf at all. Never. Make sure that you're putting it on either the second or the last shelf. Second to last or last shelf. Because you don't want the juices dripping down onto your fruit and then it gets salmonella, you eat your apple and all of a sudden you have the worst illness that you can possibly imagine. Talk about the third letter, it's cook. Always make sure that you are cooking things to the proper temperature. The last is chill. When you put things in the fridge, make sure that you're not putting chicken on top of apples. Come on, people. Your refrigerator should always be at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're somewhere else, that's 4.4 degrees Celsius. Your freezer should be below or at zero degrees Fahrenheit which is negative 17.7 degrees Celsius. Any kind of meat or poultry, you wanna make sure that you either cook it or you freeze it. If you just let it sit in the refrigerator, the juices are gonna get everywhere. Plus, it's a huge mess to clean up because that stuff gets so slimy. And it will also make you extremely sick because that bacteria doesn't come off unless you sanitize the whole thing. And that's a lot of work. So it's a lot less work if you just put it in the freezer if you're not gonna cook it right away. And things like poultry, fish, ground beef, and a variety of meats should not be left in the freezer for more than two days. Everything else like pork, veal, lamb, stuff like that, they can be in the freezer for about three to five days and it's fine as long as you cook it in that time. When you're preparing to cook, before you touch anything, make sure that you are washing your hands with hot water and soap for at least 20 seconds. And I'm not talking like scalding hot where you're gonna have burn marks that say, I definitely washed my hands, but you wanna make sure that you are washing your hands with warm to hot water. Also, another thing to remember that I already talked about and I can't stress enough, do not cross contaminate anything. Work with your meats first, clean them off, then 
you can work on your vegetables or fruit or whatever else is gonna be cooked. Now, the one thing that most people have the hardest time understanding is how to thaw meat. Any kind of raw meat and you're thawing it, there's only three things to do. Don't leave it on the counter. Do not leave it on the counter. When the chicken gets to room temperature, which is around 75 to 90 degrees, bacteria will start to grow on it. First thing is you refrigerate it. You take it out of the freezer and put it in the refrigerator in some tin foil or some kind of protective thing so that the juices don't get everywhere. Also another thing is cold water. If you put the meat in a bag that won't leak, make sure to put it in like a pool of cold water to thaw it out and change it out every 30 minutes. And then after it's thawed, immediately cook it. Another thing you can do is the microwave. Most microwaves have a, a setting for defrosting different types of meat. The most important thing is when you're cooking any type of meat, make sure that it is at the correct temperature before pulling it out of the oven, the stove, the grill, I don't care what it is. Please promise me that you are going to make sure it's at the right temperature. Beef, pork, veal steaks, anything like that. You wanna make sure that it's at 145 degrees Fahrenheit before taking it out of whatever you're cooking with. Any kind of ground meat, you wanna make sure is at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, poultry is the most important. You have to make sure that the poultry is at 165 degrees Fahrenheit everywhere so if you're cooking turkey and you put the food thermometer in the leg or the wings i promise you it will read 165 degrees but that does not mean that the breasts and the back are done cooking you have to put it at the meatiest part of the chicken that's what you do with everything the thickest and meatiest part of anything you want to make sure is what you're putting the food thermometer in discard any food left out at room temperature for more than two hours the temperature is above 90 degrees place the food in a shallow container and then put it in the refrigerator or freezer well guys that's all i have for you today thank you for watching and i hope that this video helped you on food safety be very very careful when you're cooking Okay, so just remember the four letters that I taught you, CSCC, clean, separate, cook, and chill. Clean, make sure that you're washing your hands for at least 20 seconds in warm water and soap. Make sure that you are cleaning off the area you're about to cook on. And please make sure that you are washing off any vegetables or fruits that you're about to eat because they could have harmful bacteria on them. Separate, you have to remember to separate all of your things so there's no cross-contamination. Your meat should go on one side of the kitchen and your vegetables should be on another. They should not touch the same cutting board. They should not touch the same knives, utensils, anything. You should make sure that they are separated. Cook. You have to make sure that things are at the right temperature regardless how you're cooking it. Make sure it's cooked. And please don't do the internet sensation medium rare chicken. That's, don't do that. Don't, mm -mm, don't do that. Chill. Make sure that things are separated in the fridge so that you don't get any juices on your vegetables or fruits and then you get sick and you're like, why does this happen to me? If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel and like this video if you really liked it or if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs up because I wanna know that you liked it or didn't like it so we have to dissociate the difference. So like this video. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.